Good day. My name is Collins Mondi. I want to welcome you to our first class. And um, in this class, we'll be learning how to navigate the simulations basis environment. We'll also be learning the importance of the simulation basis environment and um, how to add component list in Aspen Heises. Now, but before we start, it's very important that you understand how to load your Aspen Heises icon. After the installation of Aspen Heises, all you need to do is to double click on the Aspen Heises icon on your desktop. And after that, it will take you straight to your Aspen Heises environment. Okay, just like every other software, you will see new and you see open. If you click on new, it means you want to start a new simulation case. If you're clicking on open, it means you want to open an existing case. Now look at this, look at this space over here where you have the recent models. You're seeing a lot of things here because I've used it to do some projects. Now, but if it's a new, newly installed software, you won't see any of such, any of these items here. Okay, so once you newly installed your Aspen Hisis and you open it up, this area is going to be empty. The only things you're going to see is the new icon, the open, what's new examples and all of this. Having that at the back of your mind, I would like us to proceed to our simulation environment. So all I need to do is to double click on the new. Now it's going to take a few seconds before it takes us directly to simulation environment. Okay, we are here right now. All right, so in Aspen Heises, we have two interfaces. We have the properties interface which is also known as the simulation environment. And we have the simulation environment, okay? We have the properties package, that's the simulation basis environment or the simulation basis manager. And we have the simulation environment proper. Now, the simulation basis environment, this is where the foundation is laid. Just like um, for civil engineers, where you want to build, uh, when they want to build houses, the foundation is always the first thing after mapping out the sites the laid foundation is the same with aspen heises now before you go into your design proper you need to lay the proper foundation or else your plans or your design won't solve okay you do not start a building from the top so you cannot start from the simulation environment you need to start from the um, simulation basis environment that's the importance so before you go straight to your simulation environment you need to add your component list i need to define select the appropriate fluid package of which i'll be teaching you how to select the appropriate fluid package in the next class so today we are going to be learning how to add our component list but before then if you're dealing on crude oil or refinery process simulation this is where you add your crude oil. This is where you, 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 you characterize your oil before you move straight to the simulation environment. And if your design requires a reaction, this is where you add your reaction. So all these are done in the simulation basis environment. So let's go straight to addition of components. All right. So before that i just remembered something i wanted to show you something it almost kept my mind like i said earlier on you can't assess the simulation environment if you try to without adding the component list or fit package this is what you will see so when you click on simulation environment it's going to bring out a message to bring out a message telling you that you've not added your fluid package you've not added your component list so you won't have access to the simulation environment until all that is done so Look at this. This is a circle with a red mark showing you that you've not done anything on this, showing you that you've not added any component list. Once you add a component to this component list, the sign will change to this coloration. This is blue with a mark of white inside. 
okay so once we've done with defining or adding components to this component list this will change to this so all i need to do is to after highlighting component list is to click on add once i do that it will take me to the um environment where i have to add my components all right now if you check this you're going to see some stuffs you see select you see filter you see search for you see search by i'm going to be taking them one after the other now if you're searching by you you, you said by um full name of the company you're looking for the synonym or the formula now talking about filter under filter we have different types of families we have the hydrocarbon family you have the um our mind the our alcohols the ketones aldehyde you also have um, nitriles phenols and all of that but all this are all they are all embedded in one particular family known as all families so if i am um, say for example i'm working on a system that has to do with amines for example now under the amines i can't see carbon four oxide because carbon four oxide is not an amine right so if i come to search for this is where you type the um, company you're looking for if i type for carbon for oxide co2 you see there is no component like that under their mind but if i click on if i click on all families if i click on all families and then um, type co2 it will take me to carbon for oxide all right so that's the essence of field um the filter it helps you to select the appropriate family that you, that contains the components you're looking for but for me i i normally like leaving it at all families because everything is embedded in this okay so that's for filter now under select we have um, different types of components you have pure components hypothetical components and hypothetical solid now for pure components Pure components are everyday components. Components that you know, the components on your periodic table and um, 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 organic um, components and all of that. They are the components that are contained in the pure components. And in Aspen Heises, we have thousands of them. All right. So if you want to start scrolling down from the top to the bottom because you're searching for a component, it's going to be tedious. So that's why you have the search for to help you um, filter it out and give you the components you're looking for. So I'm going to teach you how to add a pure component, then we'll go to hypothetical components. Are we together? Okay, so to add a pure component, all I need to do is to select the component. For example, if I want to add methane, I select methane and click on add. Okay, I've added methane. If you look at this, this has changed to blue, right? Because this component list has a minimum of one component all right so if i want to add um series of components that are that are somehow connected connected in the sense that they follow each other for example ethane propane ibutane and butane instead of adding them one after the other all i need to do is to highlight click on the first component which is ethane drag it down to where we have and and butane Let's say I want to add from ethane to end within, and I click on add. All right. So if I want to, if I want to add um, uh, water, if I type H2O, it will give me water. If I type water, it will also bring out water. So it's highlighted. I click on add. Okay. So let me. We're done with this how this is just how to add your pure components. Now let me show you how to add your hypothetical components. Hypo components are also known as pseudo components or false components. Alright. Now, what are they used for? Most times when you run your analysis in the lab on a fluid, probably you want to find out the components contained in that fluid because I always tell you that no design can be successful without you knowing the composition of the fluid or the feed stream. It is important you know what the feed stream contains, the components, 
the compositions of the components in the fluid stream. So when you're given a fluid, what you're expected to run, if you don't have the component, if you don't have the composition of the component, you're expected, you're expected to run an analysis to find out the components that are in that particular fluid. So for example, your boss or your lecturer gives you a fluid to analyze. You go to the lab, probably want to find out the component. You check for the boiling point. And um, with the boiling point, you should be able to know the component in that particular fluid. Now, but while running this, you discover that there's a particular boiling point you have that you cannot attach to a particular component, especially for hydrocarbons. Now, what you need to do, you come straight to hypo components, go to method, click on create and edit hypo. You see new hypo, click on new hypo. Now, since you know the normal boiling point, for example, if it is 110, 110, you discover that other properties are not known. All you knew or all you were able to get was the normal boiling point. Hysis will help you calculate for the remaining um, components. So all I need to do is to click on estimate unknown. And once that is done, you get your molecular with liquid density, critical temperature, critical pressure critical volume and eccentricity. All right, so HISIS helps you to calculate all that. Now, having done that, all I need to do is click on it and add. But the name is also, um, you can edit the name to suit what you're doing. I can call it C7 plus or C6 plus, C5 plus, as the case maybe, or you might leave it at hypo 2000. Now for every hypothetical component, they have asterisks. So whenever you see in Aspen Hysis, whenever you see a list of components, and among those components, you're seeing components with asterisks, they are all hypothetical components. So that is how to create your hypothetical components. So I click on Add. And um, that's all about adding hypo components. If you come back to your component list, you discover that your component list is not the same color with the fluid package meaning that this has been defined we need to add a fluid package if i try to navigate to the simulation environment i won't still have access you know why because the fluid packages have not been defined now look at it the same message is coming out telling us there is something else we need to do so in our next class i'll be teaching you on how to add your fluid package thank you for your time um hope to see you in the next class thank you